Hello, I'm back. I told you I will be. I even got some new microphones and a new haircut. What I've been working on for the past six months is my own digital camera that is based on a 1960s Canon Model P that I converted myself by removing the original chassis which held the mechanical mechanicals for making the film mechanism work and I replaced those with my own 3D printed chassis that houses the electronics of a Sony NEX5. In the last video I spoke about the story of why I did what I did and how I achieved it but in this one I will be going into more detail as I make the improvements that I spoke of in the previous video. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and I'll show you how it went. First thing I wanted to deal with was the strength of the chassis underneath the rangefinder. My first attempt had issues with the viewfinder image moving around which made any attempts to align it impossible and useless. I added some meat to the existing posts I had for mounting the front and rear cover and I also added this triangle section to the far right edge to get some strength there. I'd also thickened up the top where I could and added a wall below the rangefinder to help with strength, which also helps with blocking out the light leaks from the left. Now my favorite part was fixing up the controls of the camera. First time I had the PCB glued in place with Tessa tape, which was not actually that good for keeping it in place because there was a whole lot of side to side movement and removing it afterwards ended up being more destructive than the first time. Instead, I've improved this cradle by creating these things which extend down towards the PCB to press it down and make sure it does not move around. Then I also made a block in the middle which presses down around the shutter button and then a small cutout in the corner for a tiny resistor that's on the board below. Since I put in all this effort to keep the PCB in place, I also added alignment pins to the chassis so that it stays in the correct place. I spent most of the time so far getting the two controls on the camera to be as good as they can be with a 3D printer at home. This was what I came up with the first time and slowly morphed it into what I have now, making an almost unnecessary amount of prototypes. I got rid of the separate tube for the shutter button, which I had so that I can test the clearance to the shutter button without printing out this whole thing. I started by recessing the bottom arm so that it has something to stop on instead of pushing the whole PCB along with it. Then these arms kept breaking on me, so I added a circle to the bottom of the arm to try and even the pressure from the spring on the other side, which seems to have worked. At the top I made some recesses to clear the glued on windows on the top cover of the camera. And finally I rotated the power switch to face forwards like all the other cameras and made it smaller to make it harder to accidentally move. For now, other than lowering the shutter button a little bit because it sits a high still, I think I am more or less done with this for now. I think it works well and it makes very satisfying clicky noises and it's a great fidget toy. I printed out the first print of this new version and tested out my new microphone. Then I had to use some nail polish to find out why the front cover did not fit without filing down the sides of the chassis. So now I started noticing that each time I measured the chassis it would appear to change size. So, even though I made it quite far with these, I love any excuse for new tools, so... I used these to get everything lined up that I was struggling with earlier and I made this to quickly print out and check the front cover mounting is lined up. Going back into Fusion 360, the motherboard could have been raised a little more again. Then because of that, the battery cage also had to follow along, which meant that I had to move the cutout on the back where the battery cage rests. I had to do this individually on each edge by the same 0.8 millimeters everywhere. Now came the time to print out the new version and find out how well everything lined up with the new calipers, which is where the fun really started. My first print was split into half. It seems to have clogged while ironing this layer, so I thought nothing of it and printed again, which went worse and nothing came out. So I swapped out the nozzle and then found out I have to take the printer apart to clear out the stuck filament. One screw came out nicely, the second one too, the third has some trouble 
and the fourth one did something very creative and different entirely. I tried epoxy, which did nothing, so I ended up having to try my luck with the screw extractors, which worked a lot better than I expected. Finally, I assembled and recalibrated the printer and was able to send a new chassis to it. Just to find out the next morning, I accidentally scaled the whole print down by 1% on all the axes rather than just the z-axis. Finally, I've gotten it right. It is the correct size and length and it exists, unlike some previous ones which didn't exist or partially existed. Everything does appear to fit very nicely and correctly without any problems. The Front cover finally goes on nicely. I don't have to do any sanding. I've readjusted the screw holes. Um, it turns out they're not perfectly square to each other. This side is 29 and a half and this side is 30 and a half millimeters away. So that caught me out. Next on the fit test, let's have a look at that. This nicely fits on without any maneuvering or massaging as previously to get it past this. The best thing to go on first would be the rewind lever. So we'll essentially start here and we'll work in this way. Mm, yeah, that's easier. Hold it in place with some tweezers and there's the second one and there's the third one. The next thing to go on will be the top half of the range finder mechanism. So now we'll just nicely find its place here. And there it is. Okay, and that's the first. There we go, I can hold it with these tweezers. So I try to make sure it goes in straight. Yep, there it is. Yeah, we go. Okay, that's all nice and tight. So next up is this rangefinder arm and it's a little brass ring. Some amount of persuasion, but there we go. It's in nicely. The screw holes, I think, are aligned in there. Good. Now we get the tiniest screws from the camera and get them in here. Good. Okay, all right, that's done. So now this tiny little piece here and yet another minuscule little spacer. Now, finally, to finish the range finder mechanism, just gonna clip this little spring on. And there it is. Oops, there it is, it is done final things up top is the PCB with the buttons on it. So now hopefully we get to find out if my alignment pins are as they should. So okay now that I'm now that I'm finished with the top of it we can move on to the electronic insides. The first of which to go in will be the shutter mechanism. So I'm just gonna Finangle it in there just right. There it is. Next thing that goes in will be the sensor. I haven't um, been looking after it very well, so I should get another one soon. This is not going to continue looking pretty. So let's slide that in or drop it. The NEX5 that this is made of is very simple, actually, which is quite a huge advantage for me. And then after you get a battery in there, we're just going to poke these tabs through and bend them over so that the battery compartment stays snug in place. So yeah, that's pretty much everything that the camera needs to actually work. Um, next is the motherboard and uh, then it's back to all of the outside pieces that make it look nice. And before I go putting the motherboard on, I need to connect this up because I won't be able to get to it afterwards. 
So at this stage, uh, we've got all of the electronics in. The only thing really left is the motherboard. I just got to screw it in. Um, I haven't got any mounting points up top for it. I sanded this off completely. Um, even though I shouldn't have, all of the important pieces are in there. It's just everything left around it to make it look pretty. Actually, I lied. I still haven't put in the rangefinder prism. This has to glue in like this. Well, I guess at this point I'm ready to put in a battery and see if it turns on still. Well, it's alive. Yep, I would, uh, well, I'm not sure what's up with that. I found out what was up with that, so let me explain. It only wants to turn on for a few seconds every couple of minutes now, so which puts a damper on things um, until I go looking on eBay again. And there's still a couple of major things that I need changing and a lot of tiny little buttons up, so I'm gonna make do with the broken one for now. For the next video, I bought some breakout boards for the FPC connectors on the motherboard, and I'm gonna try making my own buttons. It's not necessary for the NEX5, but if I want to upgrade to a A5000 or A6000, I'm I'm gonna have to start making my own buttons to make it line up. Thank you again for watching. If you have any comments, please do leave them. I'd love to know what you think and I shall see you next time.